on, Queen? <laughs> Hi, how are you? I'm blessed, man. I am so thankful to have you in here. What you do is needed, <laughs> like for every <laughs> single person in the whole wide world. Absolutely. Us, we really struggle at delegation. Like, I think that's the hardest thing for us to do is to grab people, grab teammates, find people and, and scale. Yeah. And so and we make excuses. So I was like, yo, we gotta have you on here so you can teach them how to delegate so they can grow. <laughs> right? Thank you so uh, much for having me. No, thank you. So <laughs> I'm gonna let you get started. Tell them who you are and then we're gonna jump right in it. Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Tatiana and I'm a team operations coach. So I work with entrepreneurs in literally every industry and teach you how to streamline your business so that you actually can scale. Um, but then also how to hire high quality people, how to lead them day to day, how to delegate, how to get everything out of your brain and onto paper so that your team can actually support you in the day to day. So my goal is to create just simplicity in the life of my clients so that you can take time off, take vacations. I just got back from a three week vacation and I want all of my clients to be able to do the same thing. So um, prior to doing this, I used to work as a district manager in the corporate industry for about four years, hired over a hundred people, had promotion conversations, termination conversations, um, you name it. And I've decided to kind of take that skill set and teach entrepreneurs how to do that because it's really important. Oh, no, no, that's dope. That's dope. Right. So when it comes, I'm going to go straight in. When it comes to yeah. delegation, why most people be like, man, somebody can't do it right. I don't want to give it to them. Mm -hmm. Why is that important for them to trust these people and allow these people to do their job? Yeah, absolutely. So sometimes we hire people, right? And we already bring them in saying they're not going to be able to do it as good as me. They're not going to be this. They're not going to be that. And so we're limiting their potential before they even get started with us, right? And so I don't think it's normal to trust somebody as soon as you meet them, right? It takes time and uh, you have to work your way into the relationship. But it is important to work at that, right? And to give them a project and let them do it to their fullest you know, capacity and then see how they do and then maybe give them a little more and then give them a little more and give them a little more. You're always gonna feel like nobody can do it better than me. But once you really start leaning into delegation, once you really start hiring the right people and learning how to lead them, you'll find that some people can actually do it better than you, right? Like, Yo, that's the truth. <laughs> Yo, and, and I and I was suffering from that in the beginning too, because I thought like nobody can do what I do better than me. And that was a lie. And I realized they do every one of my employees do better than me. Absolutely. Every one of them do better than I do. Mm -hmm. And that made me realize like, yo, I was wrong this whole time. And I tell people, whatever you gotta do, you need to find somebody to help you. But what yeah. happens I see is that people will find somebody. But then they are still try to micromanage them mm -hmm. and not allow them to be their full or use their creativity. What you got to say about that? Like, yeah. how do we fix that? Mm -hmm. So I think micromanaging happens because you're fearful, because you don't trust them. And sometimes because we don't trust ourselves, right? You may mm -hmm. micromanage because you don't feel confident about the hiring decision you made. You don't feel confident about how you've trained them or how you've onboarded them. And so our like natural you know, stress response is to just hover over them and to, you know, try to give them everything that they need when in reality, like that's the complete opposite of what they need. So I feel like if you find yourself micromanaging, just take a step back from the situation and ask yourself, like, where is this coming from? Like, is this stemming from a fear? Is this stemming from me feeling like they're underqualified? If so, is there additional training that I can provide? Is there just a simple conversation that I need to have with this person? Um, but to be honest, I think we all probably struggle with micromanaging in the beginning because I just see someone said in the chat, it's our baby and we birthed it, right? It's hard to, to trust right out the gate. But so it's human, right? It, it's natural. But yeah. I do think you have to take a step back and ask yourself why you're doing that and take the steps towards not doing it. Because honestly, like you're missing out on so much support that exists because you're limiting what they're able to do inside of your mm. baby. Did you ever, like when you got started, when you did that transition from corporate to your own, did you have a problem with micromanaging? Um, I don't know. I feel like I 
probably did the opposite. I probably just like let the reins go completely <laughs> and lost sight of what was actually happening because I trusted yeah. them too much. And it mm -hmm. wasn't that they weren't doing their job, but I just kind of thought, oh, I hired this person. They're great. Now I don't have to worry about it anymore. Mm -hmm. And then little details started to slip and I kind of had to like step back in. So I think I went on the other end of the, <laughs> of the spectrum. Yo, I, I, I had that same problem, right? But Break that down because that's a real problem because we'd be like, yo, we hired somebody. Come on. Yeah. I'm out of here. You on the <laughs> list, right? Yeah. But at, at all, they don't know the vision. They don't know the goals yeah. all in. They don't know the direction. They might know how to do this task, but they don't might not know how to talk to your audience or your customers, your clients, mm -hmm. whatever it is. So you still have to be there with training yeah. wheels to give them that, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you handle that? Yeah, absolutely. So... When you start working with someone, you feel like you can trust them and you just want to like give them the reins and run and go do something else, right? You have to kind of come back and realize that yes, you hired the person, but now you have to actually lead them and manage them, right? Um, so some things that are helpful to have is KPIs, right? Or key performance yeah. indicators. How are we gonna measure performance to make sure things are as they should be? Um, regularly scheduled communication. So personally, my team meets once a week and then I meet individually with my team members about once a month or just like as needed. Um, and that kind of keeps me in check, right? And make sure that I don't just go ghost and just expect yeah. them to do their jobs. So the big picture is put things in place so that there is regular communication and monitoring around the role um, and invite them into some of those like vision casting meetings, right? Yeah. Like we have quarterly marketing meetings where we're deciding what launches are we going to do this quarter? Or, like what are our marketing initiatives going to be? Bring them into that type of conversation so they understand your business deeper than just this checklist of tasks okay. that you've given them. Back. All right. So the big question, they're going to be like, how do I find these people? How much do yeah. these people cost? Like, what is that process like? Mm -hmm. So first things first, you have to figure out who you actually need, right? So you can do this by kind of brain dumping all the tasks that you're doing day to day in the business mm -hmm. and identifying like, what do I need out off my plate as soon as possible? What's going to help me make more money? What's going to create more time in my schedule? Yeah. And once you've identified like, okay, it's looking like I need a marketing manager, right? Once you've identified this person, before you even get to like, where do I post the job and how do I interview, you have to create a really, really good job description. And this is a process that I teach inside of my program where you write a job description that doesn't just say, I'm looking for a marketing manager to post on Instagram and to make TikToks, right? But it, it, it speaks to who the company is. It's personable, right? Just how we write a sales page for something that we're yeah. selling so that we can attract our dream client. We want our job description to be that too. Your job description should be a magnet to the person that you dream of working with, right? Can you give so, us some tips? Can you give yeah. us some tips on how to write it? Like, now nah, you don't gotta give us all the sauce, just some, some basics. I'll give, you, I'll give you a little bit of the sauce. So one, if, you, if your brand is personable and conversational, your job description can read that way too. It doesn't have to be the stuffy black and white you know, job descriptions we're used to seeing on indeed.com, right? Um, I build all of mine on my website, so they're branded, right, and, um, and creative. It's not just a Google Doc. Um, in the, the beginning of the job description, I share a little bit about the company. I share about our values, right? I share that having a sense of humor is important to us. I share that autonomy is important to us and that we seek autonomy and we create autonomy. We're not looking for team members that are codependent, right? We're looking for people that are independent thinkers and can, you know, really go after it. Then, oh, sorry. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> my dog, my husband just got home. Um, then, you know, we're also describing what the role is going to look like. But here's a really good tip. Instead of saying, you know, this list of 20 tasks that you want them to do, I want you to take a step back from the job description and identify what are the outcomes that I'm hoping to achieve by working with this person. Okay, I'm hiring a marketing manager. I'm hoping that our Instagram grows by this much every month. I'm hoping that you know we have an easy system for how we create content. I'm looking for this, I'm looking for that. And let your job description read in that way. Mm. And that alone is gonna differentiate you hiring someone who just comes in to do tasks and hiring someone who comes in to like 
take the company to the next level, right? And to really execute on the vision. So if you don't want people that are just doers and not thinkers, then make your job description attract a thinker, right? Make your job description be a magnet for the person that you're actually looking for. I also think it's important to include like your KPIs on the job description as well. So I, I kind of want you to think of it like how you go on a date and you wait until the fifth date to tell this person something real crazy about you, right? Because you got five first date. Years. Right. <laughs> but we want to tell them all of it on the first date. Tell them everything in the job description because the worst thing that could happen is that you paint the picture that the company is going to be one way and then they get in and it's a completely different way. So if your company is struggling with organization right now and you're hiring an admin, tell them that organization is a struggle point for you right now and that we're looking for someone to come in and be solution oriented to help us create better organization within the business. Don't make it sound like the business is perfect, but it's not. So those are just a couple like tips, but now those are game changers. Like I ain't, them ain't that one tip. That was you just changed somebody's life with those right there because you like you went deeper. Like sometimes people be shallow when they give. No, you went deep and you somebody literally can take that framework right there and yep. go hire somebody. But they need to know where to go and how much to spend. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So where to go? I want you to think about who am I trying to hire and what do I want that relationship to be like? So you're probably thinking Upwork, Fiverr, right? Hiring someone overseas. But before you jump to that, I want you to think about what do I want this relationship to look like long term? Is this someone that I want to grow with that I'm hoping will become an employee of my company one day? If so, then you might want to look in a different place, right? You might want to go to more traditional sites like LinkedIn, Indeed, Glassdoor. Um, if you have you know, needs on the ground here with you, then you might want to look for people that are local. I try my best to only hire people in Atlanta because I like having my team here with me. Like we're having our client retreat this weekend and they're all able to come and help and support. And that's only because they're here local to Atlanta. Um, also thinking about the time frame that you want to work with someone. If you only need someone to come in um, one or two times a year to, you know, help you with your systems or something like that, then sure, hire a one-off contractor on one of these random contractor websites. But if you're looking for someone for like a more long-term relationship, then you're going to want to look in a different place. Yeah. Also, stop hiring on Instagram. Stop posting on your stories and telling people that you're looking for a team member because what happens is you're attracting fangirls, fanboys, you know, people that like you and are bought into you but maybe aren't ready to work for your company. Right. Um, I don't think fans are the people that we should be hiring to work in our business. It never works out long term. Rare, well, I'll say rarely works out. Rarely long term. So what you about can fans, friends and family because that'd be the first thing and that discourages the people, right? So when you try to hire your friends and your family and they drop the ball, now you don't want to hire nobody no more. Yeah. Now I, I don't. I don't have the best opinion on friends and family because. I have people in my program that work directly with their dad or their spouse. So but how should they operate if they do hire friends or family? You said, how should they operate? Yes. So the biggest thing is you have to have division, right? If this person is your brother, yes, he's your brother. But when you're working, he is your coworker, your peer. He is, you know, reporting to you. Um, I think one thing that's important is to have like a, a safe word or like a safe phrase or something like that like hey when i say this word we're switching and we're all business right we're not brother and sister we're talking about business right now and then we can switch back after but i think working with friends and family can get really sticky really fast if we don't have processes like that in place because boundaries just get crossed mm, that people, was good. people don't feel important people don't feel like they're being paid attention to yeah, that that was good. That was that was really good. I like that. Um, all right, so, all right, when it comes to hiring, you know, a lot of times people think about cost and how much and can they afford it. They might not be making the money right now to hire. Yeah. What do you suggest? So, <clears throat> if you're not working with someone already that's helping you with your numbers, I think that's one of the most impactful hires that you can make. I have a CFO that reviews everything for me. 
uh, we just made a full-time hire in February and she was able to like look at my numbers and tell me you can afford this person starting at this point. Um, my CFO was able to bridge that gap for me and tell me who I could afford to hire. Now, if you don't have this yet, I would just take a look at your finances and take a look at your profit, like what you're actually bringing home every month. First of all, you want to make sure that you're profitable, right? You want to make sure that there is excess money to pay someone. Um, you can, as like a safe, uh, safe way to do it, reserve three to six months of their pay ahead of time, right? Um, but as far as pay, that's kind of like a diverse yeah. conversation because it, it all depends on a lot of things. Are you hiring them part time? Are you hiring them full time? Are you hiring them on a project basis? Are you hiring them um, to work with you hourly? But the biggest thing I can say just in general is you may be thinking right now that you can't afford support and that it's so expensive, but you would be surprised what five hours a week can do for you what 10 hours a week can do for you. You don't have to jump straight to having a 40 hour a week salaried employee with benefits and payroll taxes and all of that. Maybe having a contractor come in to support you on marketing tasks, administrative tasks um, for, like I said, five to 10 hours a week could be all you need. I have an incredible VA. I have a pretty big team, but one of them is a VA and I mean, she hold just, on, hold on. They might not know what VA means. We gotta break it. Okay. Down. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Virtual assistant, and she supports me with a lot of the techie stuff. So she sets up all of our automations, all of our email segmenting and stuff. Um, she does all of our client stuff. So anytime someone emails us with like client questions, she handles all of that. And she works no more than five to seven, seven hours a week. I don't think I've ever paid an invoice of hers that was more than $1,200. And I pay her $35 an hour, right? So you hear 35 and you're like, ooh, I can't afford that. But 35 an hour gets you a hell of a lot better uh, quality and expert level service than maybe $10 an hour would. Yeah. And so yeah, maybe $10 an hour is cheaper, but is it taking them 15 hours to do the same thing it takes my VA four hours to do? So hold those are all on, things. Hold on, that was <laughs> spicy. That was spicy, <laughs> right? So we both know that if that person is doing their job, we don't even see the cost. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I think having the right person in place, like the ROI is automatic almost, right? You're either making more money as a result of working with this person or you have more time. And when I say more time, it doesn't mean that you know, you're out on the beach by 5 p.m. every day, right? But maybe you just have three more hours a day that you can use for like actual thought work yeah. or that you can use to like follow up with leads or to do lives like this or to be on someone's podcast, like things that you've never had time to do before. They're freeing you up to do that, which in turn will make you more money in the long run. So, mm. I mean, you don't want to get yourself in a situation where you're paying someone and you can't afford it. But if you can afford it, I don't want you to hoard your money and just say, I can do it myself because that mentality, it's only going to allow you to grow so much. You can only handle so much as one person, but when you grow your team and it ex expands your capacity, right? I've had, right now I have like 40 something people in my program. We have, you know, 20 something active leads that we're talking to, but this time two years ago, like. There's no way I would have been able to do that, but through growing my team, it's put me in position. You get burnt out. Like, yes. people don't understand that burnout is real when you're trying to do everything by yourself. See, uh, how can you skill if you burnt out all the time because you don't know how to pass out, like yeah. pass them jobs out? And, <laughs> and that's a big thing. And I tell people this all the time. I say, think about that person you need to hire. And I'll tell you this. Go grab a credit card and use that credit card to pay their salary for the next six months or the next year so you can have somebody on your team to help you grow and scale. You got to think about growth and not be scared of risk. Mm -hmm. See, right now you're trying to hold every funds, but I'll use them. Bank, I'll use OPM so I can get started because nine times out of ten, if you get one of the credit cards that's your first with them, you get 15 months with no interest, so you're paying a minimum of $25.00. To, to hire this person to help you scale so you can start affording to hire more. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's, it's all, a, it's a, just a mindset shift, right? It's going Damn. from 
being the small solopreneur who started, you know, your business as a passion project to realizing that I've actually grown this thing. We have a consistent client base or customer base, right? This business is growing whether I like it or not. And so I, as the CEO, have to buckle up, right? And do the things that CEOs do to put me in position to be ready for all that I'm asking for, right? We, we want to make millions of dollars, but we don't have the infrastructure to support it, right? We don't have the team to yeah. support it. When you hired your first person, that first person, what was that moment like mentally? Like, yeah. break that down. Yeah, so the first person I hired was in 2019. And I hired her as like my virtual assistant at the time. She worked with me for about a year. And I'm going to be honest, in the moment, it was so exciting. But I also felt very naked. I just felt like, man, this person's about to come into my business and see that it's a mess. She's going to think that I'm a fraud. She's going to think I don't know what I'm doing. But it was the complete opposite. It was, hey, I, I see how great of a coach you are. Let's build systems that are going to reflect that. Right. Like I want the inside of your business to create the same confidence that you have externally. And I also think that's the magic of working with the right person is there is no weird feelings, judgment. It, it, we just hit it off from the beginning. So I felt like her name was Casey and I felt like Casey was my partner. Like Casey helped me go from zero dollars to two hundred and something thousand dollars in a year. Like I, she really helped me bring my business from nothing to something and man i will i will always be grateful to her let, let's let, 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 let me paint that picture all right so once you got help you was able to go to six figures before her what were you capping out at uh, two to three thousand dollars a month okay so right there that should tell you she like that's like what thirty six thousand forty thousand and she was able to that's probably like that's a five x like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yearly, quickly, quicker. So she was able to scale so much quicker because she went out and delegated. But like she said, she she felt naked. She felt like she felt all of these things that she didn't need to feel because she was already the truth. She just mm -hmm. didn't know how to do this other stuff because she was busy, uh, busy helping the people. Yeah. See, sometimes we be like, oh, man, we ain't, oh, this, I don't want to show this to the, uh, the people. I don't want them to see behind this curtain. But let them see because they could come and be scientists and start cooking mm -hmm. up stuff, putting stuff together so you can grow. Mm -hmm. see, and something I want to add to that, too, is, you know, I went from making a couple thousand a month to right after that, 26,000, 33,000. And, you know, I'm new to business, so I'm just like, what is going on? This is crazy. Um, but the thing I want to, like, I guess, hit on is she helped me grow faster, but she also helped me grow sustainably. Like, we've maintained the growth. And I think that's really important too, is a lot of people online crash and burn. They have their peak, they go from nothing to something really quick, and then they don't have anything to support on the back end. They can't maintain it. Their customers leave, they get bad reviews, they get burned out, they quit. And before you know it, you never hear about them again, right? Mm. So not only can a team help you grow um, maybe at a, a faster pace, but they're gonna help you like maintain it. It's going to be real. Like, you're going to feel like you own a real company because Cause you're you generating it. Like, because you do. Right. <laughs> right. Because that's the biggest thing. Like, yo, when you get to hiring people, it's, it's, it's so much easier on you. It's a little harder, too, uh, because you got to go out and do more. Like, you can't be doing the little bitty things that that's you was right. doing before. Now you got to go and do those bigger things yeah. because it's not about your family no more. You got to yeah. maintain all of these other people's families as well. Yeah. And so you can't say, oh, I don't got your money this month. <laughs> Absolutely. So that means you got to go out there and get it, right? So if y'all in here, what I want to do is I want to let y'all know, I, I teach content creation. I teach you how to create impactful content so you can resonate with your audience in a different way. So this Sunday, I got a free training that's going to teach you how to create impactful content. All you got to do is type the word workshop in the chat room right now. And then literally, guess what? Go check your DMs once we get off and register. It's free. I'm not asking for nothing. It's free. I'm going to teach you how to create content different than you ever heard before. You ain't never seen nobody create content like this, and I can promise you that. Um, but literally, what is that biggest mistake that you see people have when it comes to trying to delegate? The number one. Oof. Number one. You know, if you asked me this question a year ago, two years ago, when I was, like, getting started, I would have said something completely different. But now I think what I would say is 
we're delegating the wrong things. Like we're delegating surface level stuff, right? We feel so overwhelmed. And so we hire someone to come in and manage our emails. And I'm not saying emails aren't important, right? But chances are you just need a better system around how you check your emails. Maybe you don't need someone to manage your emails. Maybe you just need to stop opening your inbox every time you get a ding, right? I want you to ask yourself, what do I really need help with, right? If you're having issues with consistent sales, how can you rally your team members to help you with that piece? Mm -hmm. How can we create a better sales system? How can we create better, you know, a better welcome sequence in our emails? How can we, um, you know, strategize on our content and see what's working and what's not working? Stop having people do busy work, right? Like hiring staff is not to just get, yes, you want to get like the mindless stuff off of your plate, but you need to be aware as the CEO at all times of what is the business actually struggling with? What do I really need help with? And I think that's the difference in having a team that just checks off little, you know, tasks here and there and having a team that like can really help you take your business to the next level. And a lot of that, what I've learned in the last, I'd say, year of really going deeper with my clients, a lot of that comes from like not trusting the people you work with. And so you don't want to tell them what's really going on. You don't want to be vulnerable about, you know, the things that the company is actually struggling with. And so now you have this entire staff of people that you're paying that really aren't serving you because you won't let them in. So that's my new answer. Hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> you know I ain't going let, to let you get past with that. That was spicy. <laughs> break down that you won't let them in. Like, yeah. break that down because that, that barrier is hindering the growth. Yeah. For, first, I just want to say, I see Roxanne in the chat. That's my operations manager. So she's hey, here. Roxanne. So happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, So you won't let them in, right? So we are told online, subconsciously, that when you're the CEO, you're the boss. You know, you're in charge. You make decisions. You're, um, you know, you're all these things. And it gives us this stigma that we have to be perfect. We have to have it together all the time. And that even comes across in our content, right? We're trying to act like everything is on the up and up when maybe really we're having a hard month as an entrepreneur, right? So I think it starts with like realizing that you don't have to be perfect and that your team really doesn't expect that of you, but you have to create the type of culture where it's okay to not be perfect. You have to let your team not be perfect. You have to let your team have bad days. You have to let your team, you know, be honest when they don't know how to do something, right? And when you can create that kind of culture, you can be that too, right? Mm. You can be an example. You can come on your Zoom meeting and say, hey, guys, I'm going to be honest. You know, I didn't really get to prepare for the meeting the way I wanted to because I'm not feeling well today, X, Y, and Z. And it just creates an environment where people feel comfortable. And don't confuse comfort with laziness, right? Yeah. Comfort just means I can be free to be who I truly am. Yeah. And so how does that lead into like sharing what's actually going on in the business? I know sharing finances feels a little taboo, right? It feels like they don't need to know that. I'm going to keep them at arm's length. And you don't have to tell them everything. Yeah. But you should be able to talk about revenue. You should be able to talk about um, sales. If you're having a launch and your team doesn't know your launch numbers, how can they really support you? How if they don't it? know the results from the last three launches, how are they supposed to help you make this one better? Mm. Right? And so it's really just about removing the emotion and realizing like this is a company. People who are helping the company need to know what's going on in the company. So that's my, that's my thought. Yo, yo. <laughs> I, I love that because that was so deep. And I, I'm, I'm real big on transparency. I tell people, because that's how I resonate in content. You must be transparent. You yep. trying to be perfect. It's no such thing of being perfect. We call it high achievers. You can be a high achiever, but you cannot be a perfectionist. Because a perfectionist never getting undone. A high achiever is okay with making mistakes and yeah. tweaking it as they go. Right? Because as long as it stay in here, it's going to die in there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. You're spicy. I like this, right? <laughs> they didn't even know delegation was this deep. Yeah, you know, <laughs> honestly, I'm, I'm going to be real with you. I didn't know it was this deep. But you like, got focused. I feel like, like you just I... told me. You got I, I did, I did. And I feel like I got into this business because I wanted to help people have more time. And I knew that the key to having more time was to having a, a, a real support system. But, 
it's really working with my clients. Like I have people who joined my program when it first started February, 2021, and they've renewed and renewed and stayed. And so I've been able to help them grow as, as people. And I'm, I'm just realizing that it's so much deeper than hiring someone and telling them what to do. It's so much deeper than learning your leadership style. Like, this is the most vulnerable thing you will ever do in your business. Hiring people is the most vulnerable thing you will ever do. And just when you think that you've gone as deep as you can, something happens in the business, right? Maybe the business tanks and you have to go even deeper, yeah. right? I, I actually had a sales call with someone the other day and she was telling me that she has a retail location and it was doing great. She opened up a second one. When she opened up the second one, she was doing too much trying to run between the two and both locations started to fail. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I have this team of eight people and I feel like they're just standing around. They're not doing anything like they're not helping. And so I feel like I should just let them all go. And I was like, Oh girl, <laughs> Oh girl, maybe we don't need to let them all go. They just need direction. You have all these soldiers ready to fight, but they don't know what to do. They've received no orders from you. Right. And so mm -hmm. I think that's what it's about is just being in control of your company, knowing what the business needs and equipping your team with the tools so that they can actually support you. Being in control, not trying to control. <laughs> right. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good one. You feel me? Because I heard you like because they, people get a title and they think that the title is this armor like, oh, I'm a CEO. I run a business. And I don't care if you're a CEO. First, you got to become the janitor inside of that building anyway. So you yeah. must treat everybody with the utmost respect. Yeah. Don't walk around with your chest out like you better than anybody. Because guess what? Everybody's going to leave and you're going to be on your own. This business will never grow and you'll be alone. Right? Mm -hmm. So you got to start making sure you treat your employees or your team members yes. as team members as a part of this so they can create this legacy with you. Yep. Not just you. Because every time I see people, I look at their team. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't care about the CEO. I look at everybody around them. Are everybody around them doing okay? Yeah. If you're the only one doing okay, then you're selfish. Mm -hmm. Like, no, like bad selfish. Like you don't want to see everybody else win, and I and I, then I I get away from them. Yep. Because they gonna they whole shit gonna sink. You know. <laughs> you gotta you gotta take care of your people, man. The best way you can because. The further you get in business, the more money you make, the more people you hire, the more you realize if everyone walked out right now, I would be screwed. That would be the end of me, the end of the business, right? And so it's in your best interest to invest in them, right? Um, please do not be the person who is making eight, nine million dollars a year, but everyone on your team is making thirty, forty thousand dollars a year. Make it make sense. You shouldn't have a $300,000 salary. Meanwhile, everyone else is struggling to, to pay their bills, right? And that's a conversation a lot of people at the top don't wanna have because the more you move up, the more we're trying to expand the profit margins and all of that. But I will always, always, you know, be on the side of, I would rather everyone be taken care of and maybe we're, you know, taking home a little less every month than for us to have these fat margins. But my team is at home resenting me and looking for other jobs and, trying to figure out how they can work a second job. Like that's just not a life to live. And as a CEO, you have an amazing opportunity to create opportunity for people. Mm. So like take advantage of that, like create oh, the job that you were never able to have yourself, you know? Oh, talk to him, right? So, yo, I love all that, right? <laughs> yo, I want to know how were you able to use content to impact the growth of your business? Oh, yo, I like your content. It's funny. I like thank it. It's, you. It got good energy. Like I like it. You be just doing your thing. Like you just free with it. I love it. Thank you. So I think when I started my business, it was like an era where a lot of people were starting businesses, and it felt really stuffy. And it still feels stuffy half the time. But it just felt like we're all like following the same cadence, the same flow. And so early on in my business, I decided that like I'm gonna be me. And so if you guys go to my page after this and like watch some of my reels and watch some of my lives, you'll see I am very quirky. I'm a little awkward. I'm like goofy, but I don't try to hide that because that's who I am. And I, I just let that show in my content. I think my, um, my main thing, like people tell me this all the time that my content is like edutaining, like, you know what I'm trying to say? Like entertaining. Yeah. Education, education. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So like, I'm going to tell you a message. I might drag you a little bit, but I'm going to make you laugh while I do it. Like that's, that's always been my main thing. And then like in my live videos, I, I enjoy going live. I need to do it more. In my live videos, I think one way that I've tried to like set myself apart is I will go deep with you, right? Like I'm not going to have you join my live and I'm going to give you three surface level tips on how to build your team, right? Like we're going to go a little bit deeper than what you could have Googled before you came yeah. here, right? Yeah. Um, and I think people appreciate that. People can feel um, the authenticity. People can feel that I know what I'm talking about. You know, I'm going to toot my own horn. Like I'm an expert at this. I know what I'm talking about. And I, I feel like I let that shine through in my content and it naturally attracts dream clients. It attracts yes. people who are going to come in and do the work. It attracts people who are like, ready to go it attracts people who don't make excuses because that's the energy that i give off in my content i love it right i tell people all the time content is king yeah right because that is how you get your message out regardless mm -hmm. like nobody gonna ever know you exist if they don't see you oh and but so, i'm go, go, I, go i was gonna say one thing i'd love to add is that if you go to my page um i'll just be transparent in the last six months I didn't write 90% of my content. And that's kind of bragging on my team. Like my team has nailed my voice very, very well. Like they can write like me and it doesn't feel like, I don't know. Like sometimes people will send me a post and be like, man, this is so good. And I'm like, oh, thanks, Brianna wrote it. Like I, I didn't write that. And so that's even to speak to, even if you have this unique voice and brand message and all of that, you're not excluded from being able to delegate that down the line. You just have to be able to capture it and explain it to someone, but somebody else can literally come in and do it. And sometimes Brianna's content, honestly, converts higher than mine does. Yeah. Brianna's content brings in the application. And, and, and it's a win for the team though. Like people got to stop being scared to pass it on. Like they'd be wanting all the credit. Like I did this much. No, you got to do it as a team and yeah. the team wins. Like when we think about basketball, like the team get the championship, not the individual person. Absolutely. You yeah. know, and that's Good. the biggest thing, right? So I want to say this, if you on here and you really want to learn how to create content and create it impactful, I got a free training this Sunday. It's, it's, it's online. Um, all you got to do is type the word workshop in the comments and literally once we done go check your DM get your seats The seats are limited. I'm not letting everybody in <laughs> so if you move slow that's on you <laughs> But the content that's inside of here. Oh my gosh, you gonna you never knew content was this deep Just like you ain't never knew delegation was this deep. <laughs> oh content deep, baby Right, so if you, had a, <laughs> if you had a hundred dollars to your name and you still got your phone your phone bill is paid for the next 30 days how would you use that hundred dollars to grow your business? Oof, that's a good question. So everything is paid for. Just, just your phone bill. I, I ain't say your house and stuff was paid. Oh, okay, just, just phone my bill. phone bill. <laughs> um, I would probably, I would probably look at. Oh, that's a good question. I wish I had this one before. I would probably look at the ads that we've run in the past that have performed the best, and I would put $100 behind that. We start from scratch. What ads? Oh, we start from scratch? Okay. Oh, man. Um, if I had $100, how would I use yeah. it to grow my business? Yep, right now. This feels like a trick question. <laughs> Um, I would buy a course for a, a skill that I need to learn. Like, I don't have any ads, so I'd use it to buy an ads course. Okay. What are you gonna, what you gonna sell in an ad? Like, give me some, give us some, give us some. Um, I probably run ads to the application for my program to okay. get people to apply for my program because that's like my main revenue source. Okay. Okay. I love it. Right. Well, I want, well, I love asking that question because I want people to realize that you don't have to have a lot of money to get going. You yeah. can start with nothing, right? Majority of all of us started with nothing. Yeah. See, so they, people got to stop making excuses. Well, I don't got enough money. No, if you had a little hundred dollars right now and you was grinding, you was something and you really wanted it, guess what? You're going to go get it. Yep. I started with zero. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that. I, I, that's why I love asking that because all your resources took away from you. Mm -hmm. And now they can go and use it and apply whatever you just said. So now y'all got to go find some courses to learn something right now so y'all can apply it to grow. Go mm -hmm. learn ads. Go promote something. Go create uh, ads for other people once you take mm -hmm. the course. Do what you got to do. You can't make no excuses. 
Because as long as you make excuses, you're going to be stuck. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Somebody else is doing what you're doing, but they're not making no excuses. They're putting everything up for it. But then you worry like, yo, I, man, they're killing it, but I can't do it. I can't. You ain't trying. Like, I'm really, like, so happy to have you on here today because when I tell you delegation is everything, delegation is what creates wealth. I believe right? it. And a lot of people don't understand that. Like, the biggest people in the world, they start transitioning once they learn how to delegate. Like, they, you guys should read this book, The Who, Not The How. Mm -hmm. Right? That is the game changer. Like, because nine times out of ten, we be like, uh, like, uh, we, how, how I'm going to do this? How I'm going to do this? No, you need to find out who can do this so you can go do something else and not trying to do every idea that you got. Find somebody else to implement it for you so you can get your time back. Because the time is, is irreplaceable, but money is replaceable. And, and you're only one person. Like, you're only one. And I'm not even talking about, like, capacity. Yeah. But you're one person with one set of life experiences, with yeah. one set of expertise, with one set of knowledge right but like then you realize there are billions of people in the world with different experiences and different life experiences and different you know sets of knowledge and when you open yourself up to that like i think that's when the whole like me thinking nobody can do it better than me but they yeah. can actually do it better comes in because it's like you think you're the best at this thing but you don't even know that you're nowhere near the best at that thing right like you're probably the best at whatever it is that your clients pay you for or your customers pay you for, and that's what we want to be able to focus on. But maybe you're not the best at the techie stuff. Maybe you're not the best at the administrative stuff. Maybe you're not the best at the social media stuff. And if you allow other people to come in and be the best in those areas, it you create a machine, like a machine that can't be can't be messed with, right? But if you're trying to do everything, and then one day you're having a bad day, nothing gets done. Right. The whole business falls off because you're a one man show. But when you equip the company with with multiple assets, right, you can still move and be nimble, even if you take a vacation or you have, you know, God forbid, a death in the family or yeah. you fall ill. Like you want the business to be able to still move, even if you're stationary. I love that. That was beautiful. And I, can I add this one little piece to it? Yeah. It's OK that you're not the best. Yeah. It wasn't meant for you. You know what I'm no. saying? It wasn't meant for you. You yeah. can be the best person that finds the best person mm -hmm. <laughs> to do that that thing. No, because a lot of times people are like, man, I don't know this, so I need to go out and take my time to learn this. No, you don't. Right. Are you like, don't learn it? No. Find somebody else to teach them. Go buy the course for them to study instead of you trying to study it and pass it to them. Mm -hmm. I think the sooner you realize you're not the best, the sooner you're company's capacity to grow it just it skyrockets right yeah. and you know when you have um a team of experts you're able to even go deeper with them right so maybe you don't know how ads work so you hired someone to run ads for you but now that your ads are being taken care of and part of your sales is automated now you can learn more about ads so that you can be a better supervisor over that particular thing and ads was just the first word that came to mind because we just <laughs> talked about that. But you can apply that to anything, right? Any and every. All right, so what I want y'all to do is I love to um, bring people on to ask questions, like live. Don't ask no questions in the comments. I don't like that <laughs> because if you got an opportunity to promote yourself, to promote your business, you need to take it. So if you want to ask her a question or ask me a question, what I want you to do is right now send a request so you can hop on and ask a question. See, you got to think about anytime you get an opportunity to promote your business, you need to promote your business no matter who in the room. No matter how many people is watching. Because you never know how far something will go and you got a free opportunity to get some marketing. <laughs> All right. So, no, you so dope. Like, yo, yo, you so dope. And, Thank like, you. what you do is so needed and, and, and growth and scale. And, like I said, like, this is the biggest thing that hinders so many of our businesses that our businesses don't last. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, like my whole purpose is like when I'm doing content and branding for people is to make sure our businesses last a hundred years. Like, you know, like, sir, be it. And what you got these, the system, the team, that's how it lasts. 
because we want to have something to pass down to our kids and our build our legacy. We can't do it on our own. Because if God forbid we get hit by a car today, the, the business over. And well, I'll, I'll we'll do this question, but don't let me forget. <laughs> no, no, go, no, you go get it off your mind. We're gonna <laughs> let this queen in right when you're done. Okay. Um, we as people have bought into this message that like we have to struggle for the success to be more valuable. Like we have to get it out the mud for our, our success to be our success story to be better. And I want us to like leave that narrative behind because you know, life is going to give you struggles, right? Some of us have different experiences prior to starting our business. But from the point of you starting your business, there are certain struggles that we voluntarily step into, right? Mm -hmm. There are certain struggles that we choose because we think it's a rite of passage. We think that we have to build this thing ourselves so that we could say we bootstrap the business. But I would actually rather hear you brag about how you realized early on that you weren't the best at everything and so you leveraged other support instead of making yourself struggle through the solopreneur phase for longer than necessary. So uh, I guess that's my point is just pick your struggles, right? Don't, don't voluntarily struggle through something because you want to be able to say that you did it yourself. Like uh, uh, that's that. old school. I uh, know that's fact. What's going on queen? Hi there. How Hi. are you? We kind of already know each other, but I haven't really like spoken to you, spoken to you. <laughs> well, nice to see you in phone form. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of questions, but a, a lot of that, a lot of that you guys talked about really hit hard because I've been an entrepreneur for, I want to say a little over nine years. For the first seven years, I was hustling as an entrepreneur. I never really built my business as a running business. I never had systems. I didn't, I never had employees or a team. I never had a team, right? I was trying to do everything on my own. And I think it was, no, it was last year. It was last year. I was like, there's no way I can grow because I'm feeling burnt out. So then when I brought a team on, I've probably replaced my team three times because I was delegating tasks to people that weren't qualified for that position, right? I just gave it to them because I needed someone to do these things because you kind of talked about that a little bit. I need you to do this. I need, I need someone to help to do this. I need someone help to do that, et cetera. And they came in with, I want to assume lower expectations than what I had. So there was, there was things that I needed them, them to do. And they, the first month was like, all right, cool. Uh, by the time, by the way, I do, uh, I'm a full-time um, personal trainer. So 90% online, 10% in person. So it's mostly online, but it became overwhelming for them because it wasn't, it wasn't a nine to five. It wasn't a, administrative in the office type job because the personal training business moves fast, right? It's constantly mm -hmm. revolving. Um, my question is, how do you know how much to pay them at the beginning? Because I've been doing a trade of services. It's worked well for me for two people that's on my team. One of them is my graphic designer, my web designer, all the above. And she's been with me for two years. Trade of services, no issues. She's never once asked for a dime. I have someone else who does my PR work, same thing with her. But the past couple of girls that I've hired, I've been paying them, but they haven't done the work based off of what I've been needing. So it's been d disappointing. So I just got rid of my entire team that was working in the business. And like, I'm, I'm pretty much about to die. Like it's, the, it's a whole month now where I've been running my business on my own from the sales process to the applicants to inside of my app, client concierge, everything that has to do with my business. Mm -hmm. So now I'm rehiring my entire team, but I want to know, like, am I overpaying? Am I underpaying? And is it okay to do partial trade of services? Mm -hmm. So uh, great question. Before you think about like how much to pay them, I think just hearing what you're saying, I want you to first get really, really clear on what you need them to do and the outcome that that should be creating. Like, what are the results that you're hoping to achieve by working with this person? And then I also want you to make sure that you don't have them in like more than two departments of the business. So like, it's really going to be challenging for you to find someone who could do marketing, who can do sales, who can do admin, 
and who can do like client support that may be multiple roles. So mm -hmm. I want you to try to find an expert that can focus in maybe the two areas of business that you need the absolute most support with and right. start there. Um, and then I, I would try to not do the bartering thing. I'm glad that you have two people that it worked out with, mm -hmm. but generally speaking, it doesn't work because when you barter, one person values one service higher than the other person values the other service. Her getting your service, it's optional. She can show up to training if she wants to. So let's say she doesn't take advantage of it. Let's say maybe she's not getting results because she's not eating right. She's not going to value the work that she's doing with you as much because she feels like the value that she's getting from you isn't as much. So yeah. I would just err on the side of just pay the person. But yeah. it, it's not about the money, honestly. And this is for everyone here. Like, it's, yeah. It doesn't matter if you're paying them 20 an hour, 30 an hour. It's not about the pay. It's about the person and it's about the role. So that's where I would start is clearly defining the role. And if you're thinking like, well, I already did that. Like, I want you to go back to the drawing board. Like there's probably yeah. some Well, gap. the reason why, yeah. So the reason why I got rid of all of them last month or yet, yeah, so it's been a little over a month now, which needed to happen, although it's been a struggle and I'm like, oh my God, like, I cannot believe I'm back to square one again. I needed to go back to the beginning because I was, I don't want to, I wasn't being a good leader. So being a good leader is making sure that one, you're delegating your tasks, right? But two, also making sure that you're setting them up for success. So what does that mean? Meaning yeah. what are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? So I wasn't placing people where their strengths were. They, although they told me that at the beginning, I needed to have a real sit down and show them exactly what everything looks like and making sure that they are able to take on this task because it became overwhelming. I'm thinking like, so then I'm getting frustrated. I'm like, but I thought- Can I, I stop you right fast? Can I stop you right yes. fast? First of all, I want to clap it up and commend you mm -hmm. for recognizing that, right? That recognition is going to change everything this mm -hmm. point forward. Mm -hmm. When you know that you wasn't being the best leader and it was really on you and you took accountability, that changes everything. Yep. Your yeah. whole transition, everybody that you hire now, right? Because you're going to be in pieces. Everybody that you oh, hire yeah. now, you, it's, it's on. It's on and popping. Yeah. Yeah. It's it was, it was, I was able to go back to the drawing board and create my sales script, right? And then also like responses. So I have text templates. So now anyone I put in position, they don't have to be an expert at sales, right? Because it's a lot of, it's repetitive. It's repetitive back and forth with new applicants coming in. They're asking the same questions. They're, same response. What, train, so, what training are you getting your salespeople to train under? What do you mean? Like you ain't go out and go and get some training um, courses and stuff that they can take so they can better themselves? I have not yet, but that's definitely something I'm looking into. But I've been doing just my research on Google. If a client does not respond, how do I respond back? It's been working. It's been working. I finally think I, finally think I got it down packed almost, almost. Um, there's still a couple of sales, sales, you know, there's something still Psychology, going on, not yeah. perfecting, but for the most part, I kind of almost have it down packed, but I am looking for something in sales so I can, I'll give it to them to learn it. Right. Cause I, yeah. I don't need to learn. Maybe yeah, it's a lot it of programs, better, but it's, it's a, it's a lot of programs. Like I tell people, like I use, um, when I first started, I was using like Grant Cardone's, um, sales systems. Um, and I, I just pay his, uh, for his sales systems and I'll have my, um, Sales people watch it and understand it. But then every day what I did was prior to the calls, um, I always got on the calls uh, prior to got them inspired, got them motivated, making sure that they had a good uh, number. Like, okay, if the, each person had to make X, Y, Z call today, I'm talking to you every single day because nine times 10, that first 90 days is going to be hard. They're going to be trying to figure it out, figure out everything more. So you got to give them a lot more training because these are the people that's talking for you and your company. So you want to make sure when they on them calls that they giving value to the people on them calls and they not just trying to sell because yeah. you shouldn't have to sell nobody that already need these services. When it comes to fitness, they know they need fitness. Like it's yeah. no doubt. You know that you need to be in that gym. <laughs> uh, I'm going to, I want to share something really quick. So I have, a, like I was saying, I have a pretty big team. Um, I have hired three different salespeople and none of them have worked out and I'm back to doing my own sales. And now in hindsight, I think the advice that I would share is I think some business owners outsource sales too quick. I think I was one of them. 
Um, I think it's important to master sales yourself before handing it off to other person. And I don't mean mastering it like you know how to sell because I'm sure you know how to get people to join, you know, your, your services, but having even just a really clear process around how you sell yeah. because selling is not black and white. It's not, Hey, do you want this thing? Yes. Okay, perfect. Sign up. It's, you know, they're probably dealing with yeah. insecurities in the, in these conversations. They're dealing with all this stuff and it's, it's a big, it's a big skill set. So I almost want to ask if you can, find one person to help you and support you in things other than sales, all the other things that you need help with. Take that's, a couple that's exactly, months. That's exactly, yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing because the, I paid $6,000 last year for a company to, a company to uh, build my, my systems out, right? It crashed. It did not work for my business, right? And mm -hmm. because my business is very personal. It's not a back, it's, it's not a, an automated message back and forth. The initial message after they apply for my academy, so it's Pretty Fit Academy, they can, they'll get a response right away saying, hey, thank you for applying for Pretty Fit Academy. Um, we're excited about, we're excited to work with you. Give us, you know, two to three days to respond back because we have, you know, a lot of inquiries that are coming in, et cetera, right? So the response after that is not going to be another automated message. It is me personally having to talk to them. It's not me selling them. It's me telling them, Hey, again, it's Gian. Thank you for applying. This is what I noticed from your application. Tell me a little more, right? So now I'm building rapport with them. But I, since January, have created text templates for my girls to go back and forth with. By, the, by March, April, I'm like, why the hell is it not working? Why are they not bringing it in? So as soon as I took over, I'm like, why am I bringing it in? I was like, I get it. I'm being more personal. So that's when I said, you know what? I let everyone go very nicely, very respectfully, you know? And then I, ha since I've taken over this past month, although it's been a headache, I've been crying almost every single day while putting all the stuff together, it taught me a huge lesson. So it taught me, just like you said, make sure that you get the sales stuff down packed way before you give it to anyone else, because mm -hmm. that is going to, that's what's bringing the revenue. And if you are not bringing the sales in, exactly. your business is not growing. And then yeah. not delegating the task to just anyone as busy work, right? Making mm -hmm. sure that they are able to take this on, not as a side job, right? That's what people have been yeah. doing for me the past couple of months is like, yeah, I can do that. I work from home. I'm able to. And then they, they, and they, then they mess, then they drop the ball. And I'm like, now I'm upset with them. But then I also get upset at myself. I'm like, you gave it to them. It was a side job. Like, yeah. what do you expect? You gave someone a side job and it's not. But don't, hard. don't, don't beat yourself up because you're <laughs> learning. Allow yourself learning. Allow yourself to make mistakes. Like, even though you've been in for nine years, you just allowed yourself to be free and allow more people to come in. So, of course, you're going to cry. Of course, you're going to get depressed. Of course, you're going to go up and down. But allow yourself mm -hmm. the, 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 the energy to make mistakes. Yeah. So what, what is, so I know I asked earlier and you said, don't put a price on it, but how do you know what's a good range to place someone in a position that is not, let's say it's three to four hours a day max. Is that mm -hmm. like, I was doing 600 a month. Three to four hours a day. How many days a week? I would say max four days, maybe five, like the fifth day may, may not, it might be really light. Some days you may not have any work to do at all. So about 60 hours a month, mm. 15 a week, about 15 a week. I'll probably like 50, 60 a month. Okay. Yeah. So that's roughly like $10 an hour. Um, so I mean, in some places that's not even minimum wage. So I, I would definitely pay a higher rate. Um, but first, I would figure out what is the title of this person? What is their job title? And then I would look at comparable roles in your area. Glassdoor is a really great resource for that, where you can figure out what are other companies in comparable sizes to me paying for this type of role. That way you can be competitive. Um, but something I like to do, here's a little application secret tip. Um, I like to offer a range. So what's the most you're willing to pay? And what is like, you know, the least that you think you'll pay? So let's say it's you know, 15 to 20 an hour. And then I like to let them pick their pay based on what they think. So on my application, I ask this question, I say, based on what you know about the role and based on your current experience, 
uh, where do you think you fall on this pay scale? And I let them choose and I, I pay them whatever they ask for. So sometimes people ask in the middle range, some people ask on the low, sometimes people ask on the high. And I think that already just creates more buy-in because they feel like they have a little bit more control over love the that. coming in. I love what that. If you're not there yet. What if you're not what if you're not in a position to pay each person a thousand dollars plus a month? Start with uh, one person. Yeah, I would say hi, it's better to have one person that can be dedicated and be in it than having four people that, I mean, I don't think you're going to get the best quality work with that pay rate. So I would consolidate, right, and hire one person, pay them 3000 a month and let them make a comfortable rate uh, wage and see what that can do for your business, see how that can increase your revenue and your capacity and then go out and duplicate that versus having a bunch of little halfway committed people. Yeah, because you're going to keep replacing your team. You're going to keep starting yeah. over. You ain't going to scale like you want to. I rather just mm -hmm. give it up up front. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, what do you think I, about hiring from the Philippines? Um, I think it depends on what you're needing them to do. Personally, yeah. I I don't love it. I know it's it's very typical and a lot of people do but, it. But, it, but, it. But you're going to have to go through the same thing. Like, it don't, yeah. like the Philippines, those people are some of them are, are amazing you still gonna have to pay premium numbers if you still go for the low end you still gonna get low end quality yeah no you're right and yeah. you know you're also you know depending on what you need this person to do you need to consider when do i need this person to be available can i give them a list of tasks and they just do it by friday and that's fine or do i need to talk to them throughout the day because you want to consider time zones too right yeah, I think that's yeah. A challenge with working overseas is you're awake and they're sleeping and it's like everything is almost a day behind because of the delay. So, but I, I don't want you to think that way. Here's, and this is for everybody. If you're growing your business and you know you're in this thing for the long haul and you're trying to take this thing to the top, I don't want you to think, how can I get the cheapest possible labor? Because you're wanting someone to sell for you. You want this person yeah. to help you grow your business, pay the money. Hey, give it up. And, and, and you said, um, I'm going I'm to leave it on this and now uh, let someone else get on. But you said something huge at the beginning, making sure not that I'm someone who will make $5 million and pay my people only $40,000 a year, but I may have shot too fast up in my lifestyle and I'm over here trying to grow my business and my lifestyle is like, uh, but I'm expensive. And then I'm over here trying to <laughs> delegate my tasks but my lifestyle is like, you can't afford that because your lifestyle is expensive. Mm -hmm. So making sure that you don't jump the gun on creating this lifestyle for yourself because your business is growing. Because while your business is growing and you want to make more money, now you can't afford it because your lifestyle that, that cannot afford. I, I think that's the biggest thing. Just, just you got the power to, to pull back. You mm -hmm. got the power to sacrifice. You got the power to say, well, that's, no, that's, that's what out. this month did for me. It was a rude awakening, but it was an awakening that needed to happen. So mm -hmm. I really appreciate the advice. This was really good. Both of you guys definitely shared a lot of knowledge. I know some of my followers came on. Hopefully they got something out of it. You guys are amazing. Keep it up. Well, I, I want to thank you just for being transparent, like, and, and vulnerable <laughs> and honest. Like I, I want to thank because that shit is hard to do. Mm -hmm. And for you to come on there and do that, you really just woke up a lot of people that was on here that probably were scared and you asked questions that they probably wanted to ask or share things that they wanted to share, but they were scared. Yep. Yeah. It's okay. Like, I, I, I man, it's okay to let them tell. We have to normalize okay. that as entrepreneurs. Yeah. We're not like, we can't be, you know, just the greatest people ever. We're celebrities and we're doing so awesome. Like, look at us. It's like, no, like. Uh, this was a tough ass month and I'm definitely going to eventually talk about it on my social media. Like yeah. your girl thought she wanted to throw in the towel and be like, forget this, even though I love what I do. Cause I got to that point where I was like, Oh my God. Then I had to, like you said, take accountability and that accountability yeah. gave me power back because I yeah. felt powerless yeah. thinking that I, Oh my God, you can't keep up with all this. Like, no, you just, you, it's okay it, to go back to the, the beginning and from, start from ground up is actually going to grow your business. Yes. So it's okay yes. to fall back sometimes to shoot forward. Because nobody knows. No. You. Nobody <laughs> knows but you. Yep. <laughs> All right, All right boy, you have a blast, man. We are now in Bye. tune. Um, thank you for everything. Thank you. Right, we got one more person. You good on timing? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, I'm having fun. <laughs> Me 
you go. <laughs> Yo, this stuff is, I love this. I love everything. What's going on, Queen? How you doing? Hi, hi. How's it going? Thank you for uh, giving me a chance to come on and ask my questions. You guys have been really doing your thing up here, making me check myself, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm Diva Green. I'm the CEO and founder of I Got Your Black. We help people explore Black culture globally. So whether that is in Mexico, um, Cuba, wherever you are in the world, I help you explore Black culture through guides, itinerary creation, and now uh, group trips. Love so my it. question is, <laughs> thank you. Uh, my question is, I just recently hired technically the first person I've ever hired for like a project and I intend for this to be a partnership. Mm -hmm. My goal is whenever I go into these communities, I don't want to be like a colonizing Columbus and just like be like, okay, let me go get this vendor. Let me go get this vendor. I really want the folks in the community to essentially give me permission and mm -hmm. welcome me by hiring someone local who can engage with the vendors. Mm -hmm. I guess my question for you all is, how do you kind of uh, check yourself? The person that I'm I most recently hired was an ambassador, or is an ambassador for the, the organization. What they're gonna do is act as an experience manager. So for instance, like reaching out to the vendors, um, reaching out to the hotels, uh, getting quotes in different prices, and then ultimately getting to that place where I review things and they can kind of execute on the contracts. And two reasons, I wanna hire local, uh, but also, um, and I want to make sure that I'm working with the right people. But also, I don't want to get like the gringo price. If you're like in Mexico and you come as like the price the Mexican is going to get versus what I'm going to get is two different prices. And so that kind of helps me mitigate against costs. But how do I check myself and know, okay, this person is doing the things up to the right quality? Because I, if I'm going to book it, I'm like, okay, I know this person got these reviews. I know this person. But it's like outside of that, like I speak Spanish. So there's an element of me being able to communicate. But outside of that, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> So you're asking, how do you regulate and make sure that they're doing their job well if you're not in these countries to supervise them? Is that? Yeah, in the countries, but also a part of the initial um, conversation of like getting the quotes and things like that. Because again, the moment that they see an American in, in connection, it becomes a little bit more pricey. And the way that I'm able to make the, the trips affordable is yeah. by working with the community. Yeah. Um, so first, let me say, I, I love your business. I think it's so dope. Um, I actually have a, a client, a longtime client, her name is Carissa, and she plans luxury retreats for travel nurses. So all of this feels like super familiar. Um, she has an experience manager as well. But anyways, um, I think two things. One, you want to involve yourself in as much of the process as possible. So even though you're not there, um, maybe we can put like a, a meeting together where after the initial quotes are, are received, you and the person you've hired are meeting together to review them. Um, maybe their uh, criteria is that they have to gather like three quotes per vendor and then you're reviewing those quotes together um, and you're reviewing the details of the quotes. So everything is there, right? Like you're not missing anything. I guess the only part you wouldn't know is if they negotiated the best possible rate but to be honest with you, I think the best thing you can do is create a process around how to negotiate the best rate. And then you're just going to have to look at the quotes and see if it is what it's supposed to be. But you're right. I do think it's going to be a little challenging just because it's not you. Um, but does that make sense? Like scheduling time to review those things together afterwards. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, we definitely have time for us to connect and kind of like look at everything and decide on who the best person is. I think also for me, I'm also just warning about the quality of vendor. So for instance, if I have someone who's like, I've had to reach out to you like three or four or five times to get a quote, I'm probably not going to put you on the list because I'm going to say that you're not someone that's like, you know, responsive and then we might show up in Mexico and <laughs> there's no transportation or whatever. Um, so I guess okay. I'm thinking also about quality control. So what if you put together like a SOP or a standard operating procedure around your dream vendors in each category, right? What does your dream vendor have? They have at least 50 reviews on TripAdvisor. They um, are bilingual. They, um, the, the budget, set your budget ahead of time so your team knows what quotes to be looking for. Like, we're not trying to go over this much on this thing. So almost like creating a profile of what you want these vendors to look like. So that almost gives your quality control on the front end so your team member is only finding people that fit that criteria. 
that is like the best. Yeah, that was <laughs> Honestly, that's the gem that I'm going home. Like, I wish I could be taking notes while you were talking. Because, <laughs> yeah, that is a good one. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. You really just have made my night. And I'm literally working on her onboarding plan um, tonight and tomorrow. And so this is really helpful to think about it in that way. Yay. Well, no, that, I'm proud of you. That's dope. That's different. Like, that's so unique. Yeah. Like, that's super unique, Queen. So keep going. And, and, and congratulations on the expanding part, because that, that takes a lot of courage. Like, Thank you. I appreciate it. You two have a good night. Take care. You too. All right. I think, let's see, one more. I'm going to get one more, because so we get a body. I know a little late. <laughs> are you in Eastern time zone, where you are? Me? Yeah. I'm in Atlanta. Oh, I'm in Atlanta. Yeah, I'm in Atlanta. I'm in, uh, I'm in Johns Creek. Oh, OK, cool. Yeah, well, what I'm gonna do is because uh, it is a little late. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna let. I'm gonna let us go tonight. If you guys have any questions, if y'all want to reach out to her, if y'all want to learn more about delegation, what I want y'all to do is DM her. Reach out to her. Y'all see, she know what she's talking about. She ain't here to play. And you don't, you don't meet a lot of people that do this. So Very when you see somebody that does this, you better make sure you get them because she's gonna help you put your stuff together so you can grow and scale. But you gotta be willing to invest in yourself in order to grow. If you're not willing to invest in yourself, you're going to stay where you at. And you got to be open-minded to something new because you don't know this. All right? Absolutely. So what I want y'all to do before she get on, I want y'all to make sure y'all type the word workshop so I can teach y'all this Sunday how to create impactful content so y'all can grow and scale. Tell them how can they get, 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 get some help. Yeah, absolutely. So, of course, follow me. I My page is loaded with content. There's so much for you to watch and binge. You can learn so much just from my free content. Um, but then if you are in one of two places, so if you are someone who is ready to build your team, you're making consistent four-figure, maybe even five-figure months, um, definitely check out my program. It's called Grindaholics Anonymous. It is what I'm known for. Um, this is how we serve our clients primarily. Um, and you can learn more about that on my page. But if you feel like you're not ready for the team, maybe we're not there yet financially, send me a DM and I'll send you the link to my mini course. It's $197, but I'll give you $50 off. And it really walks you through how to transform your mindset to be ready to build your team in 30 days or less. So those are the ways that we can kind of work together. And then like I love I said, it. send me a DM. I'd love to chat with you. Yo, y'all got to delegate. If y'all want to grow up, y'all want to scale, y'all have to delegate. Like, I'm not going to lie to you. That's the only way I was able to scale like I scale because I started delegating. Like, mm -hmm. So anybody and everybody that you know that succeed and they learn to delegate, you're still stuck because you didn't delegate yet or you delegated to the wrong people. Yep. So won't you reach out to her so she can teach you how to do it properly and you can scale. Yes, let's do it. <laughs> I love this, Queen. You killed it. You killed Thanks it. Thanks so much for having me. This was great. <laughs> All right. Have a blessed night. I know your husband. He's like, hey, come on. Come on. Get a little late now. Congratulations. <laughs> I see you guys building y'all new house. I see y'all about to go get married. I love it. Congratulations, Queen. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you so much. <laughs> All right. <laughs>